symbol and um, so here it says that uh, safety first so what does this mean precisely it means that uh, that pharmacovigilance is associated with safety uh, pharmacovigilance is also you know known by other terms um, it's also called as post-marketing surveillance it's also at times referred to adverse drug reaction monitoring or um, or it's also referred to as drug safety services or safety services you know so vigilance services so, so when you apply for different opportunities you know you may see job positions which are pretty much associated with these um, different titles so it all means the same so it um, all falls under the purview of pharmacovigilance so what is pharmacovigilance now pharmacovigilance is a it's a term which is derived from two uh, two two ancient languages greek and latin so pharmaco means drug or medicine um, so again there's a contrasting difference between drugs and medicine okay so pharma in pharmacovigilance we are not doing vigilance for drugs per se we are doing vigilance for medicine so what's the difference between a drug and a medicine so drug is you know it's it's a broader category right uh, not all drugs are medicines not all drugs provide therapeutic benefit so for example disinfectants yeah, they don't provide any therapeutic benefit so they they fall under a different uh, system of vigilance um, you know now medicines any drug which pro provides a therapeutic benefit or any drug which can be used for uh, prophylaxis for diagnosis or as a therapeutic measure or for the treatment of any specific disease that is called as a medicine the second word is vigila which is a latin word you know which lante you know you might have heard about this which lante uh, also for also for to modify in a physiological function yes 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 that's absolutely correct like, so like insulin yeah insulin so that's absolutely correct yes yes so yeah so vigilare is basically it's, uh, it's it's a latin word which means to be vigilant to be awake to be alert now what is pharmacovigilance um so when we use the word uh, ph so you said not all drugs are medicine but yes. all medicine are drugs are all medicine drugs because they fall not again i would I, so what is a drug drug is a chemical moiety right so mm -hmm. now if we if i talk about uh, you know there are some her so there are some other formulations which are not derived from a specific chemical which are derived from natural or biological or animal sources so like for example uh like vaccines vaccines they are not drugs they are basically a separate uh, they fall under a separate category and hence we have different vigilance for that and we call vigilance which are done for vaccines as vaccino vigilance or vaccine safety the regulations for vaccines are pretty much different from those we have for drugs then we have something called as uh, you know uh, we call them as in um, we, we can we know them as um, natural products or we can also call them as complementary medicines we can call them as homeopathic remedies we can call them as um, you know, um, so so drugs which are derived from other sources, which are not, not drugs, basically substances or um, which are derived from other sources or products which are derived from other sources, from minerals, maybe from plants, from animals. Um, they don't, again, fall under the purview of pharmacovigilance. We have different vigilance. We have different system for monitoring them. And there are different regulations which are associated with that. So hence, um, the, dis the difference is essential here. So uh, we right now we are studying specifically about vigilance, which is associated with drugs. We are not discussing medical devices. We are not discussing natural products. We are not discussing vaccines. For uh, three of them, we have different systems which are in place. And you know, there is also vigilance, which is uh, applicable to cosmetic products. Um, so we call them as cosmetovigilance. So that's another branch within farm, you know, within uh, safety services or within within safety that we study. Then, uh, as I was telling that uh, disinfectants. Disinfectant is a drug because you know when you do um, the in vitro test, in vitro testing. So basically, um, you know, if you use a certain compound, 
and if it shows a zone of inhibition uh, of a certain bacterial culture we basically that can be used as a, a disinfectant like for example alcohol is a disinfectant now there are pesticides which are there which are also disinfectants um or basically um, pesticides which are also used for killing uh, any kind of um, you know uh, any kind of uh, in, you know as infection which could be associated with a uh, with the plant so for that also there's a separate regulation there's a separate regulation which is associated with pesticides uh, which is covered um, you know which we can see maybe touch you know or maybe just look at it peripherally in the 21 CFR so there are different so vigilance is a broad category and we have subdivisions uh, excuse me uh, yes. uh, I I read uh, first presentation and I also solved test, yeah. but there is a written that uh, pharmacovigilance also includes the disinfectant used to uh, disin disin uh, dis uh, matlab uh, uh, disinfectant used to clean the uh, food uh, food area. So that is written in that. that so. Is written. So pharmacovigilance is only specific to medicine, right? So it is uh, non, for disinfectants, not disinfectants. Not disinfectant. So for disinfectants, you know, there is uh, there's a separate regulation. You know, there's a regulation okay. uh, specifically for pesticides. Uh, in pharmacovigilance, we are exclusively, is you know, only talking about medicines which provide therapeutic benefit or medicines you know again you know when i talk about um, you know in our previous session we were discussing about some of these dyes right like uh, radioactive um, maybe iodine or you know we were talking about we were talking about some uh, dyes which are used for angiogram again uh, when i talk about them i'm only the, the, the reason why i was only discussing about that was because that comes in contact with the human body right so uh, if, if any drug that comes in contact with the human body, then that is a subject uh, of vigilance. You know, we okay. will consider that okay. under pharmacol. So here we are now, again, when we talk about vigilance, I was talking about different categories here. Again, within those, there are two, se two separate categories. There is human pharmacovigilance, okay, or there is human vigilance, and then there is veterinary vigilance, so animal, you know, we talk about uh, drugs which are tested on them on animals um uh, drugs you know for example pets you know uh, at times when they fall sick you know you have to give them medicine uh, at times uh, even pets can also experience adrs and those are again uh, studied by the pharma companies under a different division like for example there's a company i'm pretty sure all of you might be familiar about it's called merck sharp and dome it's also also stands for it's a subsidiary of merck uh, msd so msd has a you know they ha they have a section for veterinary vigilance. Uh, similarly, um, when I was working for Pfizer, we had a department called Zoetis. So in Zoetis, any kind of ADRs which are exclusively associated with uh, pets or with animals were uh, studied. So so there's human pharmacovigilance and then there is veterinary pharmacovigilance. So right now we are we are only discussing about human pharmacovigilance and that too about drugs we are not touching um, vaccines we are not touching medical devices or cosmetic products at this point of time but in our upcoming chapter we'll definitely discuss about them as well okay now when we talk about the definition of pharmacovigilance what is pharmacovigilance now um, please understand that this is also a science a recently evolved science as a, as a matter of fact so when we talk about pharmacovigilance you know it um, it got it it got its root um i would say from uh, from the 18th from the 19th uh, century actually um where in which uh, you know in the year around 1832 the first adr was observed um, and we'll be discussing about the history in a while so basically um it's it's a science which comprises of a set of activities which is related to the detection assessment understanding and prevention of any adverse effects or any possible drug related trouble so when we talk about science um, what is science you know now we need to ponder upon that so all of us are science students we are all students of science that's why we are in this class so uh, science is a subject wherein which you know you prove the cause and the effect right you establish uh, a process or you establish like a, uh, a derivative through which um, or you establish let's say a path 
to 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 which you find a solution or you basically um, conclude something which is universally accepted so uh, so in pharmacovigilance also we are doing the same thing we're trying to prove the cause and effect we're trying to say we're trying to provide information about drugs and not just what are the adverse reactions or you know but we are also trying to provide other information like could there be a new indication associated with this drug could there be a new population to which this drug can be um, you know can be administered to uh, could there be any other um, secondary benefits associated with this drug could there be let's say any any rare adverse reaction which can be life threatening or fatal so we are basically basically uh, establishing a process through which we are concluding or through which we are establishing some facts which would be universally accepted so all of us you know you may have seen uh, the package insert at one point of time, all of us may have taken some of the other medication. Um, but in the medication, there's also when, when we take a medication, usually there's also a package insert that follows that. So in the package insert, it says about side effects, common side effects, uncommon side effects, rare side effects. So all those are uh, all those are um, science based evidence. Um, which which was derived from a process of research or surveillance activities and hence it is universally accepted so if i know that uh, you know a drug called voriconazid can elevate uh, the liver enzymes um, if i take it in us if i take it in australia if i take it in uh, europe if i take it in india if i take it anywhere you know there's a possibility that i may experience that adverse reaction so again um, for different populations it may be different but there's always a possibility that the drug can cause a specific adverse reaction. That's why it is given or documented in the product monograph or in the package insert or in the summary of product characteristics. Okay, so pharmacovigilance is the science which relates with a set of activities relating to the detection, assessment, understanding, and prevention of adverse effects uh, or any other possible drug related problem. So over the course of time, you know, we follow the process where in which we discover a molecule, we develop it, and then we provide the evidence. We provide the evidence how safe the drug is, or uh, we also do the regulatory submissions to ensure that uh, the safety or the safety and the efficacy of the drug is recorded uh, and documented with the regulatory agency. Now we also need to understand what clinical trial is so a clinical trial is a systematic study of pharmaceutical products on human subjects so when we talk about um, pharmaceutical products we're talking about um, we're talking about investigational medicinal product drugs which are under investigation and when we talk about subjects we're talking about patients and volunteers because part of clinical research also includes um, you know healthy volunteers so uh, and why do we do clinical trial? There are different objectives to it. So, you know, first we basically do the clinical trial to verify the effects uh, or to identify, verify the effects of the investigational medicine product, or we are trying to identify any new, new adverse reaction. We're trying to study the pharmacokinetics of the drug, of the investigational product. Uh, so what is pharmacokinetics? It's basically the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and uh, excretion of the of the drug and similarly we're also trying to study um, the pharmacodynamic property basically the efficacy uh, or um, you know is it causing antagonistic effect is it causing synergistic effect is it causing additive effect is it causing cumulative effect so we're trying to study the different effects and in the mean course of time we are also trying to understand the adverse reaction at adverse event now let's maybe take um, while and see the snapshot here so it's it's it, we need to understand that there's a lot of effort that goes into establishing a drug you know or, or releasing a drug into the market um so it takes at least 12 to 15 years for a drug to be in the market and uh, and because it involves series of you know toxicology screenings preclinical testings then we have the clinical trials you know we have the phase one phase two phase three trials where in which in phase one um, in, in the preclinical testing, we basically test and we do in vivo studies, we test the drug on animal models. Um, and then during this process, almost 5,000 compounds are evaluated for their, um, 
for their toxicity for their safety or you know for the biological activity we basically also you know at times uh, on these animal models we 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 do the compartmental analysis where in which we understand um, the retention of drug in every organ in every specific in, in specific organs within the animals um, and from that we can basically deduce or we can understand you know what is the metabolism rate of the drug or um, uh, or you know um, what is the um, half life so half life can also be established during this period um, then once we do the animal studies then we file a investigational new drug application at the FDA and once IND is approved that's when we get the permission to do the clinical trials now the clinical trial technically comprises of three phases the fourth phase is what is also called as post-marketing surveillance it is slightly different from pharmacovigilance or let's say it's slightly different from the real um, from 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 vigilance post-approval or we can also call this a, call that as post-approval safety studies um, the reason behind that is in phase four clinical trial in phase four clinical trial uh, it is still con it is still done under a regulated environment in the sense that um, you may have heard about observational studies epidemiological studies uh, you know co studies using cohorts so all 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 these studies they are done under they are classified under uh, phase four clinical trial whereas post marketing surveillance or post authorization safety studies they're completely different they are not um, they are not limited to a specific population uh, it can be you know all of us you know when we are taking any medicine or any drug any medicine uh, we are subjecting ourselves to post marketing surveillance so that's the difference so when we talk about phase one clinical trial so in phase one clinical trial 20 to 80 healthy volunteers uh, are tested when which we determine the safety and the dosage in phase two we have 100 to 300 patient volunteers when which we evaluate the effectiveness and we look for side effects in phase three you know the population is um, we increase the population size to thousand to three thousand patient volunteers when five when which we verify the effectiveness and monitor any adverse reaction so once we complete the phase three we file a new drug application at the fda and then the fda you know takes around two two and a half years to three years to review it and then eventually approves it and once it's a when, once it approves the drug then we do the phase four clinical trials so that brings us to a question um, so when we talk about phase two or when we talk about um, uh, phase three when which we monitor the adverse reaction what is an adverse reaction or rather what is an adverse event so i remember in my last class we did touch base about these two uh, categories here so we'll be discussing about them in more detail so what is an adverse event so an adverse event is any untoward medical occurrence that could be present during a treatment with a pharmaceutical product at any dose, but which does not necessarily have to have a causal relationship with the treatment. So we have the definition, but what does it truly mean? So let's break this down. So when we say an adverse event, so let's, for the time being, let's forget the forget about the word adverse. We are not looking at that word adverse. We're just looking at the term event. Uh, so what is an adverse event again? It's an untoward medical occurrence. So when we talk about medical occurrence or untoward, so uh, we know that, let's say, metformin. So metformin uh, is uh, given for the treatment of diabetes mellitus, right? So um, now let's say if patient is taking metformin for diabetic, diabetes, uh, for diabetes mellitus, and, you know, eventually uh, the patient is recovering, let's say, the blood uh, sugar levels are getting controlled and you know the patient is experiencing the therapeutic benefit it's all good as long as the disease is controlled as long as the patient is getting the benefit from the drug is good but let's say the patient takes metformin for diabetes mellitus and uh, and 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 all of a sudden you know within a few days the patient complains of elevated blood pressure now that's an untoward medical occurrence so the patient was supposed to take metformin for diabetes mellitus but now the patient's complaining of elevated blood pressure so here elevated blood pressure will become a adverse event now you may all ask but we cannot be sure that we cannot be so sure that you know the metformin may have caused uh, the elevation the elevated blood pressure 
So that is where you know the second line of this definition comes. So that may be present during a treatment with a pharmaceutical product at any dose. So metformin, irrespective of what dose the patient is on with metformin, um, you know, if the patient experiences any untoward medical occurrence, which does not necessarily have to be related with the treatment, can be called as an adverse event. So what does this mean? So irrespective of if the patient says anything, which is an untoward experience, it may or may not be medical as well. If the patient says any untoward, tell, tells about any untoward experience or occurrence that the patient may have experienced after taking the drug, that is called as an adverse event. So let me ask you all a question. The patient took, let's say, donazepil hydrochloride. So donazepil hydrochloride is a drug which is used in the treatment of, who can tell me what is donazepil used for? Donazepil hydrochloride. Are you, please, the question again? What is the question again, please? So what, so there's a drug, donazepil hydrochloride. So what is that drug used for? Maybe all of you can do a quick search on your smartphones and tell me the answer. What is the indication of donazepil hydrochloride? Is it blood pressure? Okay. No, not blood pressure. Okay. Alzheimer's? Yeah, very close. So maybe it's related with dementia associated with Alzheimer's type. So uh, very good. Yeah. So donazepil hydrochloride. Let's say the patient is on the therapy of donazepil hydrochloride for the treatment of dementia associated with Alzheimer's type. Now, uh, while on donazepil, uh, the patient is taking that every, you know, every day the patient is taking uh, donazepil. So uh, let's say uh, one fine day, the patient took the medication. Few hours after that, the patient fell on the floor. Okay. Now, in this scenario, do you think that there is any adverse event here? Yeah, it's like fell fell down on the floor. I mean, okay, okay. Anyone else? Do you all agree to this? Sorry, can you can you repeat the question? I didn't I didn't get that. Yes. So basically, the patient is on a drug which is used in the treatment of dementia um, and the name of the drug is donazepil hydrochloride and mm -hmm. while on the treatment the patient is taking the drug every once a day um, while on the therapy the patient one fine day you know let's say uh, goes to the physician you know tell ask the patient you know how are you feeling today how are you doing today the patient says that i'm doing good but recently i um, you know i had a fall i fell uh, and uh, the patient took the medication in the morning and few hours after that the patient fell on the ground so in this scenario there is no medical occurrence so can i say that there is an adverse event here do you think that there should be an adverse event here and if yes, yes. or if no what yes. is it i would say is that, yes i would say is an adverse okay. Event. okay and what is the adverse event the adverse event is the fall because of okay. what happened is like the person fell while on that medication. So uh -huh. it doesn't have to be the medication that caused it. As long as an event occurred and it's not something that um, it's palatable, it's still an adverse event okay. in respect of the causal relationship. With the okay. 